Well, yesterday my truck broke down about 70 miles from home. I just got it towed home and uh, we'll see if we can figure out what's going on with it. it. Seems like this is becoming a regular occurrence now. Well, that's just about my worst nightmare with this truck. I was driving about 70 miles from home and I started hearing a ticking noise. It sounded like an exhaust leak almost, but it was definitely a misfire. And as I continued to drive, it got worse until I lost power and the truck would just barely move anymore. It shut itself off and I let it cool for a few hours was able to drive for about another mile after it cooled off and then it shut off and just didn't have the power to make it up the hill I needed to make up. The first time I turned it back on, it was very sluggish to turn over. And so I thought maybe it was an alternator that was squealing, but as you can see, I took the serpentine belt off and the squeal didn't stop. So that ruled out water pump, alternator, all the usual belt driven stuff. So, screech coming from inside the engine. Welcome to Barn Tech. Well, I just finished draining my antifreeze out and it's not green like I had hoped, but the good news is it's not milky like it's got oil mixed in it so that's good news let's move on to the oil next well i don't see a lot of sparkles in the oil but there is quite a bit of fuzz on the drain plug so um, i'm going to clean that up and uh, we're going to have to look inside the engine next as i think about all that this truck has put me through I'm reminded of the story of Job from the Bible. Job was a good man, but in one day he lost everything. And his response to that was not to blame God and get angry, but he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, I was on my way down to the high pressure fuel pump that I thought was my problem but I'm actually hearing this turbo wheel drag as I spin it. And it's kind of got me wondering if that's my problem. I can actually hear it dragging there. So let's pull these turbos apart and we'll look at those before. I, I think I still need to check out the high pressure fuel pump. I've got it this far apart. I might as well go all the way because I don't want to put the cab back on and It'd be two more days of work to get back to this point again. So um, let's pull the turbos and look inside. I've done this by hand before, but that's way easier. Well, there's no doubt that my turbo's bad now. The uh, shaft has scoring on it. The bearings here are scored inside and out. Uh, in fact, all of the metal pieces, all of the pieces that, that move or rotate are scored up. So something was definitely going on with the oil system. I suspect there was contaminants uh, in the oil. And so I'm going to go hunt that down next. Well, I couldn't find anything wrong with the high pressure fuel pump. In fact, when I looked at it, it doesn't even use engine oil for lubrication. It uses only the diesel fuel. I didn't have any water in the water trap. And so what I'm looking for here is to see if there's any sparkles in the diesel here. Any sparkles in the diesel would indicate that the pump went out because the, the way the diesel circulates, it comes back through the filter again. I'm not seeing sparkles in the diesel here either. Okay, well there it is. You can see my oil filter split. That's exactly what happened. The 
oil filter failed and allowed all of that trash to circulate through my engine. Holy moly, it's worse than I thought. Look at all this glitter on top of that filter. Oh man. I don't know which bearings that came out of, if that was all turbo or if that was from the bottom end. I guess we'll find out. Well, the moment of truth is upon us. This engine's already been bored out to the maximum allowable. So I'm about to pull the heads and find out if the cylinder walls are damaged. If they are, it means I need a new block. If they're not, then maybe it's just bearings. I still see crosshatch. That is awesome. Okay, crosshatch is good news. I heard a clunk. Sounded like bearing. I don't see any scoring. That is Excellent. That is the best news in weeks. Yes. I've still got crosshatch in these four cylinders. I'm going to go to the other side, make sure the other side's good. I did hear a clunk on, uh, sounded like one of the rod bearings when I first started turning it. So if I'm lucky, I just need a set of bearings and this thing will be back together again. Well, this is the best news I've had in two weeks. Uh, the cylinders on this side, I see just the faintest scratches on them, but nothing that won't polish out. Um, don't even feel the scratches with my finger. I just, I just see a little bit there. So I'll hone it, take care of that, just in case there's anything on there to grab an edge. I'm gonna start disassembling this thing. I did hear some clunk sounds as I turned the crankshaft. So my guess is the rod bearings are shot. We'll see you in a minute. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh my. Wow, check this out. Can you see that? Is there a little bit of metal in that? Holy moly. Okay, every bearing shot. This is gonna be bad. This is going to be bad. Look at this trash. And, oh. Oh, that's a big chunk. Oh, that's not good. That's a big chunk. I need to find where that came from. Holy moly. Wow. Oh, look at this is all, this is all metal. Let me get a magnet. Let me see if it's steel or bearing. Oh, this is all steel. Maybe not all of it, but look at that. Okay, that's, uh, that's hard parts. Okay. Ooh. There's that big chunk. All right, I gotta find where that big chunk came from. And okay, well, here we go. Let's tear into a little bit more. Okay, one thing I noticed a minute ago before I pulled the engine out of the truck was the number two piston looked like it had marks from the four valves on top of it. So I was thinking there was a good chance that that one was the one that was most messed up on the rod bearings. Check this out. Yeah, so that piston was slapping the valves every time it came up to the top of the cylinder. 
I didn't see that on any of the others, so hopefully this one is the worst one. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off and we'll see how it looks like inside. Okay, there's what's left of that bearing. Holy moly. Oh, and that crankshaft is destroyed. I was wrong. This is what failed and killed my engine. The uh, oil filter splitting was a result of all of the junk that it picked up from this. Holy moly. So how did that happen? Was the oil journal clogged in the crankshaft? Wow. Uh, okay. That's like no bearing left. Like completely gone. Wow. Let's get the piston out. Let's see how bad the piston is. There's no bearing. There is literally no bearing. Oh my goodness. Oh no. So check out, this is where that hard chunk was that I found earlier. It was a chunk from the number two piston where this was slapping the crankshaft because it was so loose in there. Slapping the crankshaft. So, what in the world? How is there no bearing? So the, there was a little sliver of bearing. This was all that was left of the bearing for the number two rod. I'm going to have to look for scoring on the cylinder wall because I can see here where the crankshaft got into the skirt on this piston. So this is a this is a softer metal, so hopefully it didn't destroy the crankshaft and the uh, cylinder wall. Let's flip. Uh, I'm not ready to. I can't flip it over yet. We'll flip that over in a minute and look at that cylinder wall. I need to get the number one piston out of the way since I've already undone the cap for it. See, number one, it's got the bearing. Oh my. Bearing ain't pretty though. So here's what the bearing looks like on number one. Oh, I, I see what happened. The, the uh, bearing from number two got up inside of there and ate away the bearing from number one. All right, I need to keep these pieces together. Let me, uh, I need to slow down, slow down and just methodically take this thing apart. So we'll, uh, we're gonna stop the camera for a bit. I can see bluing here. Oh, this crankshaft feels terrible. I don't even know if that can be turned. All right, here goes number three. Let's see what number three's got. Clean so far. Uh, 
crank's not too bad, but this bearing is trash. Probably because of lack of oil pressure when number two went out. Um, so yeah, this was this was not good, but at least this one didn't destroy the crank. So let's see. This is uh, this is number three. So I'm gonna set that there. Let's look at number four. Just ever so slight of scratches on the crank, which is understandable given how rough this bearing is. So the uh, looks like the the trash from. Uh, looks like the trash from the oil filter when the oil filter blew uh, went into all these other bearings and they got slight scratches uh, about as bad as what the turbo had the turbo just couldn't handle being scratched up like that so uh, so far except for number one and number two not so bad so let's keep going all right now time to check out the main bearings and see how bad that is. I suspect they'll be okay. A little bit of scoring. I suspect that's from all the brass that went through. But not too bad. Yeah. There's just a little bit of, um, well, that's the back side of the bearing. Let me, oops. Ooh, that ain't good. So this bearing's not looking good, but yeah, there's there's marks on the crankshaft. I can barely feel it. So something hard went through that bearing and uh, tore it up pretty good. In fact, oh, you can see <laughs> you can see where this bearing melted and uh, and resolidified. So. This one got hot. May have something to do with uh, why the engine started slowing down. In fact, I bet that's what it was. The engine started slowing down when this bearing heated up. Yeah, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but that sure looks like a crack to me going all the way across that bearing surface. And if I spin the crankshaft around, about 90 degrees right next to this oil hole there's another crack going that way I don't see a crack on that side but this is uh, this is definitely not good I'll get the machine shop to verify but I'm pretty sure I need a new crankshaft well it's been a while I had to order a new crankshaft. New crankshaft finally came and it was damaged. You can see the tone ring here is warped from where the crankshaft got dropped by the mail service. So fortunately, I had the tone ring off of my old crankshaft. All I had to do was cut out with a die grinder around the positioning pin, heat up the tone ring, and then it should just slide right off. Uh, of course, I had to do the same thing to install the new tone ring, or excuse me, old tone ring on the new crankshaft. But now I've got the crankshaft welded back up, so I should be ready to put it back into the engine. Okay, since I've got valve marks on top of my number two piston, I'm going to check out the valves here before I put the heads back on. I don't see any obvious damage, so I'm going to take a little bit of diesel and pour it into the uh, intake and exhaust ports here and we'll see if it drains out underneath.
Whoa, too much. Okay, I've got bad news. I went to go clean the block and I came back and one of the exhaust valves was leaking diesel out. So uh, it's actually the, the valve here that appeared to make the biggest indentation on the piston, so not super surprised. So let me get some lapping compound and I'll see if I can fix that up. Well, just as I suspected, when I tried to lap in this valve, it was wearing on one side of the valve more than it was wearing on the other. The seat was okay, so I took this old valve out and I got a used valve from an old head and I put it in there and lapped it in and you can see the ring is uniform around that valve. So I've got a good valve I'm going to put in there, put this head back together and we'll test and make sure that it holds the seal again. Well, here's some bad news. I checked all the lifters before I pulled it apart, but apparently this one must have been in the compressed position. So I'm going to have to pull this head back off and check the lifters again. Okay, if there was any doubt in the way that the rocker arm looked, you can look in the end of the lifter here and you'll see that this lifter is collapsed. Um, if I shake it, it falls down. Just poke it with my finger and it'll go back up in there. So. I'm going to pull this thing apart and see, I suspect that there's um, something that's jamming up that inner plunger. We'll see if it's something I can fix or if I need to get a whole new set of lifters for this thing. Better? Yeah, I see the, I see the metal shavings here. That is unfortunate. So. Because I see those metal shavings there, I'm just going to go ahead and pull apart at least all the other lifters on this side of the engine and see if I see the same thing in them, which I should because this was all throughout the engine. So I'm probably going to have to pull the left head and go through all those lifters as well. But Okay, all of this metallic flake came out of one lifter. This is what happened when that oil filter split. Well, you probably haven't noticed every time I've changed hats or changed shirts, but this has been going on for a while. My truck actually broke in February. Now it's May, but I've got the engine pretty much put back together again. I'm going to turn it over a couple of times and see if I can get the lifters to prime up before I assemble the fuel system though. Okay, well, I just finally built up oil pressure. It just took me cranking it over several times. I swapped out one of the jugs here. I got two clean jugs, so I'm going to run it over and see what comes out of the turbo pipes. And if that looks clean, I'll dump it back into the engine and continue reassembly. Feels heavy. Put quite a bit of oil out, so that's good. Hopefully the lifter's primed up with that much oil coming out. It's still running out there. Let me check this one. Looks like I had less come into this one. Oh, that is not clean. That is nasty. That would have locked up my turbos again. So I'm gonna need to run a bunch more through until that comes out clean. I thought I cleaned everything real good, but uh, yeah, that is nasty. Let's see what this one looked like on this side. Oh man, that is black with chunks in it. All right, so not clean oil coming out. I'm going to run this a bit longer and dump that oil and get some clean jugs and see how much oil I have to run through this system to get it flowing out clean. I, I suspect what happened here is um, the, uh, when that filter split before, it allowed 
junk to come up into these pipes here and uh, into the oil cooler and all of that. So I need to do this until I got clean oil coming out. I do not want to install the turbos uh, until I got clean oil coming out. And I certainly don't want the fuel system on here because I don't want the engine to crank up with all of this garbage in there. So we're going to run it over slow RPMs, just cranking until it comes out clean. And uh, you don't want to watch that, so I'll skip till it's good. Well, I ran about five gallons of oil through and it just kept on putting glitter out. So I flushed the oil cooler for about an hour and every time I dumped it, more glitter came out. So I bought a new oil cooler and I'm gonna put the new oil cooler in, clean everything up and see if the oil comes out clear now. Okay, I got all the glitter cleaned up out of the oil cooler, got that flowing clean oil to the turbochargers. So I put everything back together and now I'm lowering the cab back onto the truck so I can test it out and see if it worked. Well, I got everything put back together again. It took longer than I expected. It was kind of a pain, but now we're gonna see if all that hard work paid off. This is gonna be legitimate first start. Have not turned the key yet. Let's see what happens. Well, it wouldn't maintain fuel pressure, so I ended up having to take it back apart again. These little fuel lines that connect the fuel rail to the injector, seems like every time I work on one of these, these things leak. So I went ahead and ordered a full set of these, came with the little gaskets that go on the ends of the injectors too. So I put those in on this side. Now I'm putting all these new fuel lines in and hopefully that'll fix it right up. Well, remember how at the beginning I thought this was a fueling issue and then I found all those issues inside the engine? Well, now I'm beginning to wonder if I'm dealing with two issues. So I've been trying to prime the fuel system. I pulled the valve covers off at least four times now, which is several hours worth of work. And I'm not seeing fuel leak out of those little fuel lines to the injectors. But when I try to bleed the fuel system into a jerry can here, it's uh, it's blowing air out. So let's let's see that. See, it's not even primed up right now. Okay, now it's now it's primed up. Do you see how it's not really clear? It's got bubbles in it. It's starting to clear up now. And the pump doesn't even sound right. The pump sounds like it's sucking air. So I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull the fuel lines off the inlet to the pump and we're gonna stick those in this can and see if the truck runs better off of this can. Well it wouldn't prime up from that fuel can, so I suspect there's an issue with the lift pump. Actually, I believe that I'm going to take this cover off and I'm going to find one of the little flapper valves has some trash trapped under it that it picked up from my tank. So let's see. Well, it wasn't obvious at first, but if I lift up this valve right here, there is a piece of trash caught up under there and that may be enough to stop the fuel pump from priming. So I'm going to clean that out and we'll see if that fixes my issue. Well, I have no idea what this is, but it almost looks like maybe some kind of a fishing lure or something. It's plastic and this is what was trapped underneath the uh, flapper valve inside the lift pump. So anyway, Let's, uh, let's clean it up, put it back together, and cross our fingers. I 
been working on this thing for three and a half months, and I think I'm finally through all the surprises. I've primed the fuel system. It should be ready to go now, so let's turn the key and see what happens. Well, it looks like that's gonna do it. This thing's finally running good, got it all back together again, done with all the surprises. So, of course, I couldn't go three and a half months without a daily driver, so I bought a new truck. So, I'm not sure how much more of this thing you'll see, but I'll have new projects on the channel as they come along. And so, if you've enjoyed my videos, why don't you go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. God bless.